piece to your book on who you are to tell your story. That's another piece of who you are. Graduate schools want to hear from their colleagues in the academic community about who you are inside the classroom and outside of the classroom. You, have, you absolutely have to have relationships with your faculty so that they will write, can write, solid and in-depth, deep letters of recommendation about who you are. And they can't do that unless they know you. And they can't get to know you before you graduate. So you have to start really thinking about forming those relationships. And it's not even really just about them writing a letter of recommendation for you. What it's really about is that those relationships help you grow professionally and within your disciplines. When you get to know your faculty in those ways, they help you grow professionally and help you become better holders of knowledge within your discipline. You come to the University of Michigan and Flint for a reason. You have absolute access to these experts, these scholars in your field, and you should be getting to know them. Not only for your own development, but because you are absolutely going to need them to write recommendation letters for you. So that's really what all that says. But again, I'm going to give you this PowerPoint so you can read through the read through the details, but um, that's really what this says. Okay. All right. So we talked about this a little bit. I don't have a lot to say about this. If I were talking to pre-med students, I would say something differently right now. But um, know this. How many of you will work after you graduate as well and go to grad school? Okay. So I am going to take a minute to show you this then. Um, interviewing. How many of you love job interviews? Right. Usually, if there's more students in the room, one person will raise their hand. Most of us don't, but here's the thing. Let's say your story is phenomenal. Talk, just talked about auto sales and how you can translate that into some great human, human experience where you get to know people on different, I mean, it's just profound. Anytime you work with people, it's profound. But your story is profound like that. I mean, you have a great story. Academically, inside the classroom, you have a great story. Outside of the classroom, you have a great story and great experiences. Your resume is perfect. It is just your essay, your recommendation letters. And you're applying to grad schools and you're applying for jobs at the same time. You're going to get a job interview. That's going to happen, OK? I can guarantee you that if all that's true, what I just said, you're going to get a job interview. And then guess what? If you haven't prepared for that job interview, there's a very good chance you're going to walk into that job interview and bomb it. Or if you don't bomb it, they're not going to, they're not going, the people doing the interview, the interviewer, is not going to walk away knowing your story because you're going to be nervous. You're going to forget all the things you wanted to say. You're not, you're not going to be as articulate as you wanted to be. Job interviewing is an art. Believe this. If you've taken the time to be all of those things that I talked about just a moment ago, then you need to take a little bit of time to master the art of interviewing. And here's the beautiful thing. My office has purchased a program to help you with this. Okay. It's called Interview Stream, and I'm going to show you it here really quickly. And it is online mock interviewing, okay? So you can imagine what this looks like. I'll show it to you, but you can imagine. You select some interview questions from a bank, you set your webcam up, somebody comes on your computer and asks you, sitting behind your webcam, questions you've selected and then you're going to answer them and record them. It's going to record. <laughs> Doesn't this sound like fun? It really isn't. It's painful. It is absolutely painful. <laughs> but I can assure you it is the best way to get good at it. Okay? It is the only way to get good at it. So when you go in for the job interview, you've already blown them away on paper. 
and then you go in for the job interview, and nobody else is doing this, I can tell you this because it is painful. Everybody else is going, no, no, I'll wait for the job interview. I'll start thinking about this a week ahead of time. You practice, you go in there, and you're going to blow them away with the interview, too. Because here's what I know about University of Michigan Flint students, and I know this because I talk to employers all over the place. All over. We deal with lots and lots of employers in my office. They love the University of Michigan and love students. Because you are diverse, you are taught in small classes with academic experts, you are sharp students. And you have lots of experiences outside of the classroom that make you different from some other traditional kind of college students. And they love that. And what I want for you is for you to have the bang up resume to have written the incredible essay, to have powerful recommendation letters. And then I want you to be able to go into that room with your head held high, with all the confidence you can muster, and blow that interview away. And the only way that's going to happen is you can practice. I can assure you this. OK, so it's called the interview stream. I'm just going to show you really, really quick. Have any of you gotten into your career connection account? Woo, we love it. We, this is growing. I mean, people are really starting to do this. You have a career connection account, okay? It's free for you. <coughs> Excuse me, for life. As an alumni, you'll have free career services forever. So if we never meet again, and you'll remember that as an alumni, free career services for life. In career connection, you can do many things. Upload your resume, have a professional counselor critique. There are over 5,000 employers in in Career Connection that really that have contacted us, the University of Michigan Flint, to specifically recruit the University of Michigan Flint students. On any given day, there's over 300, over oh, three to 400 open jobs in this system, and they are open, and they have posted specifically for University of Michigan Flint students and alumni. So Career Connection is a lot of things, but my purpose today is not to teach you about career connection, <clears throat> it's to show you interview stream. But um, I want you to think about your career connection account. It is how you have to, how, it is the only way that you can find an interview stream, okay? Alright. And if after this you decide you want to have fun and do one of these mock interviews and you can't find it, then just always call the advisor. But it's really easy, the home page. Whoops. Thank you. This is how I get to it. I drive people crazy like this, but this is how I get I go to the A through Z index. You guys use that? You know. The A through Z index is the best. And we happen to be called the Advising and Career Center, which stuff. There have been times, I've been here 28 years, there have been times they wanted to change our name. And I said, no. No, because we are A, we start with A to C, so we're always going to be at the top of the list. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there we are, academic advising and career center. Go to students. I hope not.
neighbor says, tell me about yourself. What they're really looking for is for you to trace your passion, for you to explain why what you want to do is the next logical step. So when you do this, don't start out with a lot of personal stuff. Stick to how did you get interested in the career, what have you done to demonstrate your initiative and potential, and why are you a good fit? Hi, I'm Rob Sullivan, and my passion is helping people identify and communicate the goal in their backgrounds. This led me to write the book, Getting Your Foot in the Door When You Don't Have a Leg to Stand Up. You may be wondering, why should I spend my valuable time watching this presentation? Well, I'll tell you, we're going to help you unlock the hidden value of your story. We are going to take the mystery out of the interviewing problem. So you see where he's going with that. It's exactly what I'm talking about. That's not even, I mean, those resources are great, but what interview stream really is, is about conducting that interview that you guys are so excited to do. And here's the thing, once you're done with your interview, it will save, okay? And it will, it, you can get a web link, it'll, it'll give you a link. And then you can send that link to people to critique, okay? Like, you could start off with like a partner, or a parent. <laughs> but what would be really useful is, is if you send it to your professional career counselor or your faculty advisor for critique. Now here's the thing. Students are not forwarding their interviews for critique. And I can understand why. I mean, I know it's, like I said, it's painful. Once you do the interview and you watch it back, it could hurt physically. <laughs> But it will get less painful and you will get better at it every time you do it. I promise you that. So maybe you want to wait for a little while before you send it to somebody for a critique. But here it is. Conduct interview. And you would answer it. 
and then it will go to the next question and yada yada. And then you can watch it back, you can email the link for a critique, get, there's all kinds of things you can do with this. So that is interview screen, which can be found in your career engineering. You may go, there's a graduate school interview in here. So if you, at that top tier level before I chose journalism, there's one that says graduate school. So you can take a look at that interview just in case the grad school you happen to apply to, like the English program at Notre Dame, just in case your program like that requires an interview. But what sounds like is you all are going to be working graduate school students. So you will be going on job interviews. This is going to be helpful to you in that regard. Okay. All right. You can also go directly to the onplint.edu career connection, which is clearly the better way to do it than what I do. <laughs> okay, so here we are, financial aid. Oh, this is something that doesn't matter. Just like researching graduate schools and which program is best for you, you need to research it, the, the financial aid that's available um, at those graduate schools. Um, there are a ton of resources out there for you on the internet. And these are links. So um, again, I'm going to I'm gonna, I'm gonna send Casey this so that you guys have access to it. Through scholarship searches, of course, you all probably already know about the FAFSA. If you thought your fun days of filling out the FAFSA are over because you're getting ready to graduate from undergraduate school, not true. You'll have to fill it out every year for grad school as well. But the beautiful news is you're an expert at this point, so it won't be as, as difficult as it was in the beginning. One of my favorite websites, so much so, well, is scholarships.com. Okay? It's, I love this website so much, I contacted them. Actually, one of my friends contacted them. And they sent us three huge boxes of these little styrofoam, you know, what do they call them, stress things? Scholarships, like, I don't even know how to describe this. It was like, they were like little um, yachts, scholarships, you get it? And it said scholarships.com, it was so fun. Anyways, really difficult to tell that story and have it make sense to you guys. But I still have those three huge boxes of scholarship styrofoam quotes. Um, E-student loan, financial aid, pass web, grad school is expensive. You're going to have to think about this ahead of time. There are um, things available to you at graduate schools that weren't available to you at undergraduate schools, like fellowships, um, but every program is different. Depending on which program you're going into, it may have opportunities like that, and it may not. So you really want to research those schools not only their cost, but what added financially do they have available to their students. Because you all are eligible for the loans, for the federal loans. That's still true. That follows you right through to grad school. But what additional money does that school have for their students in the form of scholarships, fellowships, whatever? Okay, you really want to think about that and have a good sense of it. A lot of times, unless you're independently wealthy, this is the deciding factor on where you'll go to grad school. A lot of times this is true. Okay, timeline. Okay, so we're gonna go through this kind of quickly. Junior year, fall and winter semester. So you can, here at Urban Flint, you can be a junior and be a junior for like two years, really. So being a, like if you go to a very traditional college, where four years and you're out, you graduate. That's not typically how our students follow that. So when you have about a major fall and winter semester left to go, okay, so when you look at your next calendar year and you have that in the next year, and in your present would be the year before that, does that make sense? Then that's where you are with this. So basically when you hit 55, 56, 60, 62 credits, you need to be thinking about this. Fall and winter semesters, okay. Researchers will start researching your schools. Um, talk with faculty and other men mentors about your goals and interests. This is, this is an incredible resource, and this is 
one of the best ways you can get to know your faculty is through conversations like this. Here's what I'm interested in. What programs are you aware of? Do you have any suggestions for me? What should I be looking at? That kind of thing. Identifying recommendation writers. There is nothing more aggravating as somebody who writes recommendation letters than to get to, you know, 10 students coming in in your the month before you graduate asking for a letter of recommendation. You are not going to get the best letter that I can write under those circumstances because I'm going to feel pressure to do it quickly because I don't want to hold you up. I don't want to hold you up to your deadlines, and so I'm not going to be able to contemplate it as much as I would have wanted to. So be thinking about this very early. Okay? Yes? How early would you say like, to ask the teacher to, like, okay, to give them enough time? I mean, what like, kind of material? It depends on your relationship as well, right? It's, if you need to cultivate that relationship a little bit more, then that could be one of the things that helps you cultivate. You know, and say, you know, I'm going to be graduating in another year, and I'm going to need, I really am, am thinking about who I'm going to ask to write uh, a recommendation letter for me. And just, it, it all depends. There are lots of variables. But I will tell you this, at the start of a semester, and you need it by the end of the semester, that's not too shabby. But even a little bit more time is appreciated as well. But a month before, it's really difficult. You may be thinking, oh, I asked you a month ahead of time. And, you know, isn't that great? But usually faculty have way more than one student asking for letters is the issue. Okay. Attend graduate professional schools on campus, research your financial aid op options. So basically in your junior year, junior time frame, you're doing, you're doing, you're really getting intense with your research. Okay, that's what this is all about. Summer semester, that's when you're really gonna want to think deeply about it. There's no perfect time to take your graduate school test, by the way. A lot depends on what you find on your research, and you have to build your timeline backwards because some programs are gonna have certain deadlines. And so you're gonna to wanna to have the test taken before that program's deadline, right? And each program's a little bit different. So you can see why starting your research in your early into your junior year, it's not the end of the world if you haven't done that. It's okay, it's fine. But if you're at that spot and you can start doing that, that's perfect, you should do it. If you're at a different spot and you haven't started doing this, it's okay to start doing it now. Clearly, you don't have an absolute time frame that you're thinking about with grad school. You're a little bit more you know, open to what that might look like. So, um, okay, so take your required admissions test. No absolute time, if there was. All programs want you to take it by January 1st. I will tell you that that's not true. You have to know your programs, know your test deadlines, know your application deadlines, and put together a timeline for yourself on when you have to do things. But as a general rule, there you go, junior year, summer, uh, summertime. Request application materials, school catalogs, and financial aid information. So now you're moving from just researching to action. You're actually getting things. You're saying to the school, hello, I'm interested in you. Can you mail me some stuff? And guess what? You're on their mailing list. And they're going to be mailing you stuff and emailing you stuff. Continue making contact with your recommendation writers, letting them know what's going on. Hey, this is coming up. This is what we're doing. Now here's the other thing. Let's say you're working on a research project with a faculty member all through the summer of your junior year. Or, yes, all through the summer of your junior year. You don't want them to write that recommendation letter until the research project is done. So you just kind of have to have to judge. But one thing's for certain, stay in contact with them so that they know it's coming up 